Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In this video, I wanna do an update on how my use of NetGalley for requesting books for review and reviewing books has been going. I do get a lot of books for review on NetGalley and I review a large number of books. Last year, I did more of these where I did sort of quarterly updates. I know a few of you were very interested in all of my quarterly updates, but I don't know that the wider audience was that interested. So instead I thought, now that we're heading into fall, I've gotten through a lot of the year it might be interesting to take a look back at my use of NetGalley so far in 2023. As I'm filming this, it's the beginning of September, so we've made it through the first eight months of the year, and this just feels like the right time, heading into fall, setting personal goals for the end of the year, thinking about next year, this seems like the right time to talk about this. So here's what we're going to be doing in this video. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the stats of how many books I've gotten for a review on Nuck Alley this year, how many of them I reviewed, how many of them I've DNF'd or chose not to finish and how many of them I still have to review. Then I'm going to briefly talk about all of the neck alley arcs that I've DNF'd this year and take a look at all the books that I have read in terms of what they are and their star ratings and what we can draw from that. How am I doing this year at picking books for myself to review when I've tried to be a little bit more choosy about it. And then finally we're going to take a look at all of the books that I still have to review for the end of 2023 and and the beginning of 2024 because I do already have some arcs for 2024. So I know it's a little early but we're gonna get into it and uh, maybe you'll find some things that you want to check out. This is a lot of books to cover so I'm not gonna go into great detail on the majority of them. If you want to hear my full thoughts I do have Goodreads reviews for all of these books. Some of them I have video reviews for so you can go and find some of that other places. This is intended to be less an in-depth review of everything from Neck Alley this year and more a big picture look at how things have been going, what I've been reading, how well I've been liking what I've been reading, and what I'm anticipating heading into the end of the year. So let's start by taking a look at those numbers. So far in 2023, 77 of the books that I have read were advanced reader copies from NetGalley. My total books read is, I want to say, around 370 so far. I do read a lot. The last few years I've averaged 400 books a year, and I'll, I'll probably hit that again this year. So, so far, 77 of the books that I have read as of early September are books from NetGalley. We're going to talk about what those are. I have DNF'd or chosen not to finish eight of the books that I've requested from NetGalley. So those are books where for one reason or another it wasn't working for me. In some cases I chose to DNF it because I didn't want to affect the rating of the book and I don't rate my DNFs. I do write reviews for them to give people an idea of what wasn't working for me in the book, but sometimes for authors, especially debut authors from marginalized communities, sometimes I just also don't want to bring down their rating by finishing the book if I'm not enjoying it. So a lot of times I'll end up DNF. And as for how many more do I still have to read, that is 29. 18 of them are 2023 releases and 11 of them are 2024 releases. Okay, so that's kind of a big picture overview. Now we're going to look a little bit more granularly at those buckets of books and what falls into them. I will say in general, I think I've been doing a better job of being picky, but not a good enough job. I'm still requesting more books from NetGalley than I want to be requesting. <laughs> I've been trying to cut back and one of the ways that I've done that is try to very very rarely request anything over 400 pages unless it's an audiobook because I just don't enjoy using an e-reader for long books and that has been helpful uh, and, and a good number of these are, are on audio. Okay here are the eight books that I DNF'd this year. Wild Blood by Lauren Blackwood. I had some real questions about this one. I, I read a lot of it before I DNF'd it, I think almost half of it. Missing Clarissa by Ripley Jones. I thought this writing was pretty terrible. There are better books with this premise. The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten. I think her writing is not for me. This was the second book from her I've tried. I thought the first one I read was fine, but I didn't love it, and I just really wasn't into The Foxglove King, but other people disagree, which is fine. Solomon's Crown by Natasha Siegel. This is another one where I read almost half of it and I was just really bored. It was not my cup of tea, but again, 
Your Mileage May Vary, The Cherished by Patricia Ward. I read two chapters of this, I think, before DNFing, and it was horrendous horrendous, one of the worst written, most offensive books that I've read. I don't know how the hell this got published. Uh, I thought it was terrible. So I would like noped out after two chapters because just in the first two chapters there were so many issues. Yeah, that was that was not a good one. A Crown of Ivy and Glass by Claire Legrand. This just really wasn't working for me and I didn't want to write another negative review for a Claire Legrand book. I'm bummed because she's written a couple of my favorite books, but the last couple of books from her just really haven't worked for me and this was one of them. Venom and Vow by Anna Marie McLemore and Elliot McLemore. This is another one where I read a lot of it. I was just kind of bored by it. It wasn't what I go to Anna Marie McLemore for. I like a lot of their writing and I thought the premise of this sounded great. I, I do think other people have been enjoying it a lot more than I do and I don't want to steer people away from it and I didn't want to rate it low but I wasn't having a great time so I, I DNF'd it. And then most recently Shigidi and the Brass Head of Obalufan by Wole Talabi. This one I also read almost 50% of it before deciding to DNF. I like the premise, the idea was interesting, there was just so much casual misogyny, I didn't like the way it was handling the main female character and I just I, I was like no I can't I'm I think I'm done with this. So those are the books that I DNF'd. Aside from a couple that had things that I found offensive, most of the time it was just things where I was either really bored Board or wasn't having a good time but didn't want to finish it and write a super negative review with a really low rating. So that's that's kind of how I've handled that this year. Everybody handles things differently but that's what I've done. Now let's take a look at the books that I did finish and there are 77 of these so I am not going to go into depth or we will be here all day. But I do think it's interesting to take a look at the star ratings of these. I sorted them by star rating and we're going to go from lowest to highest which is what I usually do in my end of month wrap ups as well. And when I did this what I saw was I have been really enjoying the majority of the books that I've been requesting from NetGalley. Most of them I'm rating pretty high and I found a surprising number of favorite books of the year from NetGalley. That surprised me actually how high that number was so we'll get to that. But overall, I think I'm doing a pretty good job of picking books. And when I'm not enjoying a book, most of the time I DNF it. There are cases where I didn't for one reason or another, but overall I think that's been the case. Okay. I have not given one star to any of my NetGalley reads this year. I did have two books that got one and a half stars. Those are The Witch and the Vampire by Francesca Flores. I'm still so bummed. This book had so much potential and it just was not it. I kept waiting for it to get better and it didn't. I, yeah. And Witch King by Martha Wells. This one just didn't work for me and I pushed through because I've loved a lot of other things from Martha Wells. I probably should have DNF'd this one to be honest. That, that probably would have been better. Next are the books that I gave two stars and there have been two of them that I got from NetGalley. Those are Where the Darkness Blooms by Andrea Hanna. I liked the premise of this but I had a lot of issues with it and I have major questions about the choices in the ending. I have an in-depth review for this one with spoiler tags because <laughs> I get into the spoilery reasons I did not really like this book. It was another one where I liked the idea and I kept waiting for it to get better and I thought it was going a place I was gonna like and then with the ending I was just like seriously that's how you're ending this? What the hell? Yeah, no. Uh, I also gave two stars to The Cradle of Ice by James Rollins. This was just, it was very okay. I felt middle of the road about the first book in the series last year, but I wanted to give the second book a try because there were things about the first book that I really enjoyed and I was hopeful that maybe the second book would improve. It did not. It was worse. So I will not be continuing with the series. These books are way too long and it, it was just, it was not, it was not what it, I wanted it to be. So no. I also gave two books from NetGalley two and a half stars this year. The first one is Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee. I'm sorry, I know she is a fan favorite. I think what this novella showed me is that Fonda Lee is just not the author for me. A lot of people really really love her work and it's one of those things where objectively when I read it I'm like I get it. I can see why people love this thing. Objectively there are a lot of things that are well written about it. Subjectively, 
I don't really enjoy it. And it's not like she is not interested in telling the parts of these stories that I am interested in. And that's fine because, you know, she doesn't need to cater to me. She's got a very large audience of people who like her work. But reading this novella, because I wanted to try something from her that wasn't in the Jade City series, um, I think this just showed me that maybe she's just not the author for me. Uh, that's okay. I also gave two and a half stars to Masters of Death by Olivia Blake. This was fine. I didn't actively dislike this, but it is my least favorite thing that I've read from Olivia Blake. A common complaint that I hear from people who don't like her work, she's the author of The Atlas Six, is that her books are overwritten, that she uses a lot of purple prose, and I don't think that that's wrong. It just doesn't usually bother me in her books, because usually what I'm going to her for is this sort of melodramatic, dark academia type work, and that kind of lush writing in those genres works for me. I enjoy it. I'm not bothered by it. Masters of Death is kind of a horror comedy and her writing style doesn't work for me in that tone. So that was what I learned from reading Masters of Death. Okay, moving on, let's take a look at all of the neck alley arcs that I gave three stars. There were eight of them, so we're we're moving up in the world, I suppose. Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. I liked this. I don't think I loved it as much as some people did, but I did enjoy it. Court of the Undying Seasons by A.M. Strickland. Honestly, this book is among my biggest disappointments of the year. It was it was okay. It was, it was fine. I liked it, but I was expecting a new favorite because the last two books from Am Strickland I have loved, and this one was just very middle of the road. It had some things that didn't work for me, but I can see a lot of other people liking it. It's got dark academia vibes. It's got vampires and a magic school and dark romance, but YA. I think a lot of people will enjoy it more than I did. The Nameless Restaurant by Tao Wong. I liked this. I didn't love it. And a lot of times that's what gets three stars for me. Burn the Negative by Josh Winning. I actually read this for a horror arc vlog. I had this vlog, I'll, I'll link it up above, where I had a bunch of advanced reader copies of horror novels. And so I read them all for this video. And this was, I think, the lowest rated one that I read for that. I liked it, but I had some questions about the ending. It, it was a mixed bag. The Saint of Bright Doors by Vajra Chandra Sakhara. This was one that I wanted to love more than I actually did. And it's another thing where I'm like, I can see the talent it took to write this. It's just not something that's personally vibing for me, but I can see how it could be a favorite book for someone where it's their thing, you know? The Legacies by Jessica Goodman. This was kind of like a soapy gossip girl with a murder mystery type thing. YA. It was fun. I liked it. I didn't love it. It's not my favorite of her books, but it was enjoyable. Under the Smoke Strewn Sky by A. Deborah Baker, aka Shauna McGuire. This was the finale of this novella series, and again, I liked it. I thought it was a decent finale. I feel like the series kind of lost steam around book three uh, and never quite picked back up again for me. It was, it was good. It was good. Middle of the road. And finally, House of Marion by J.L. This was my first book by her, and this is one that I really like for what it is. I think if you are somebody who likes YA fantasy and you're really just there for the vibes, for like the, the magic school vibes and the forbidden romance vibes and the melodrama, you're probably gonna enjoy this. This is one though where there's a lot of things that are not very well explained. The magic system isn't super well explained. The world building I have questions about. Some of the choices in the world building I have questions about. But I don't think the author cares that much. I think she knows what it is and she's there for the vibes and her audience will be there for the vibes. So don't go into this looking for some really amazing world building fantasy. But if you're if you're there for a, a vibesy YA melodrama with a, a magic school, this is the book for you. Three stars. Can you tell I read this one recently? That's <laughs> why so I have more to talk about. Uh, okay, moving on, let's look at the books that I gave three and a half stars from Neck Ellie. There were 10 of them this year. Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. This was good. I enjoyed it. I didn't love it as much as I do her adult romance, but you know, her first YA romance was, it was good. It was cute. 
The Scourge Between Stars by Ness Brown. This was a really interesting sci-fi horror novella, so if you want horror in space, this is a good option. I, I think my main complaint with this was the ending wrapped things up a little bit too neatly, but I, I liked it. It was good. The Pledge by Kale Dietrich. This is another one where there are some plot holes, but I had a really good time with it. It gets three and a half stars and I think I rounded up to four just because it was really fun. This was like a rhombi queer YA slasher and it was, it was just enjoyable. It wasn't perfect, but it was, it was a lot of fun. The Lies of the Ajungo by Moses Ose Utomi. I liked this, but I thought it was too short for what it was. It felt more like a fable than a fully fleshed out story and I just wanted more from it, but I did like it. Verity and the Forbidden Suitor by J.J. McAvoy. Again, I liked this. It wasn't a huge standout for me, but it was a good, enjoyable, slow burn historical romance. Eh, you know, I've been enjoying that series. A Guide to the Dark by Maria Matui. This is YA contemporary paranormal I don't know, it's got a sapphic romance in it, but it's not really a romance. It's more a light horror novel about grief. I liked it. I just think it was trying to do too much in the book. And that meant that you didn't get enough time to fully do all of the things it was trying to do. But I, I, you know, it was good. I would read more from her in the future. True True by Don J. Hooper. I think this is very good. I didn't expect it to feel quite so YA and you know that is not anything against it. I think that means that it's probably really good for the audience but it felt very teenage. <laughs> like it felt very young uh, in a lot of the, the specifics and again not a bad thing. I just don't think I was quite expecting how young it was gonna feel. And it's like a little outside of what I normally read anyway. I don't pick up a lot of YA contemporaries and I think I was expecting something a little bit different, but I do think it's good and it's dealing with a lot of hard-hitting topics in a way that, you know, makes sense for a teen audience. Damned If You Do by Alex Brown. This I liked. I don't think that the marketing... <laughs> it, it, like, I don't think the marketing sets you up for how much trauma <laughs> Is, is is dealt with in this story because it's pretty intense. It's pitched as like a, a, I think Filipino Buffy the Vampire Slayer sort of, but with like Filipino mythology. I, I want to say that that's right. I'm sorry if I, I got that wrong, but I think that's right. That is true. I see where they get that, but I was expecting something a lot lighter <laughs> in tone than what this was. And it had light moments, but it, it's a lot. There's there's some trauma in this, um, but I did I did like it. It was good. 40 Words for Love by Aisha Saeed. I actually read this pretty recently and I loved it by the ending. However, the beginning is pretty slow to start and a little boring and she does not do a great job of creating scaffolding for the reader to understand the world and the magic that she's thrown you into. It's magical realism and it's a really beautiful story. I, I just think that the, the beginning part needed some work. <sighs> oh man. All right. Last, last three and a half star was A Nobleman's Guide to Seducing a Scoundrel by KJ Charles. I just read this. I haven't even talked about this on my channel yet. I just read this. I liked this. I loved the first book in the series. I didn't enjoy this one as much, but I still think it's good. I think that this probably does work better if you have read the first romance in the series. It is a historical male-male romance. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not, gonna, I'm, I'm not reviewing all the books in depth here. Uh, I liked it. Not as much as the, the first one. The first one was delightful. This was, it was, it was good. Okay, four stars, 23 of them. Oh my God, how long is this video? I'm saying too much. I, I was like, I'm not gonna talk in depth about all these books. And then I'm like, oh, let me give you some sentences about what I thought about all of the books. Of course. Honestly though, I'm impressed how much I remember because I'm not looking any of these up. I'm impressed how well I remember all of them. I'm waiting for one where I'm like, what happened in that book? But so far, I, uh, you know. All right, 23 books got four stars. 
The Spite House by Johnny Compton. This I really liked. It's a debut horror novel, The Haunted House, that is really also about grief by a Black author. Not a perfect book. I think there are too many perspectives and it gets a little messy by the end, but really good and a really promising debut. I will for sure pick up more from this author. Against the Current by Olivia Matthews. This is the first in a cozy mystery series set in New York City uh, with a Caribbean family. I, I enjoyed it. I liked it. I don't read a lot of these, but I, I liked this one. Blood Debts by Terry J. Benton Walker. Really enjoyed this. The cover is a bit misleading though. I knew it was a YA fantasy. I thought it was set in like 1920s Louisiana or something like that. It's not. It's set in the modern day. So it's like an alternate modern Louisiana. Um, it's very melodramatic. It's very soapy. It's like CW show level of soapy with backstabbing and romance and melodrama and curses and stuff. It's a good time. It's fun. The Cage of Dark Hours by Marina Lostetter. This is the second book in a series that's kind of a fantasy horror serial killer murder mystery series and I loved the first one. I liked the second one but not as much and there was a lot of harm to children in this one that I was not prepared for. It was like kind of triggering honestly for me um, but it, it you know it was good. It was it was pretty good. I, I liked the first book better but I liked this. Editing Bethany here and I discovered a couple of four stars that I accidentally skipped over. Listen this was a lot to look at so why am I surprised that I missed a couple? Uh, a Long Stretch of Bad Days by Mindy McGinnis. I really liked this. This did effectively what Missing Clarissa was trying to do. YA small town secrets mystery true crime podcast deal. It was good. Also Stars and Smoke by Marie Lou. This was a lot of fun. It was kind of a, a soapy YA spy thing with a pop star who is going undercover and sort of a slow burn romance. It was fun. My Dear Henry by Kaylin Barron. I think this is excellent. It's part of the Remix Classic series that I've really been enjoying. This is where they reimagine classic stories from the perspective of characters with marginalized identities. And so they're having queer and Black and Indigenous and person of color authors come in and tell these stories. And I think they're really cool. This one is a reimagining of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, but make it queer. And I really liked it. I thought it was good. One for My Enemy by Olivia Blake. This is like her witchy contemporary fantasy Romeo and Juliet story with lots of drama. It was fun. It was very enjoyable. I liked it. That Self Same Metal by Brittany N. Williams. This is a YA historical fantasy set in Shakespearean era London following a black girl with magic and there's fairies except like the fairies from it's like Midsummer Night's Dream but if it was real and the fairies were real and Shakespeare was influenced by real fairies um it was good it was fun I think it's gonna be the first in a series and she is queer a bisexual main character and some gay side characters. Furious Heaven by Kate Elliott. This is the second book in her gender flipped Alexander the Great in Space series. Oh, so good. Chef's kiss. I didn't rate it as high as the first book. I think just because there's so much compressed into this, but I could also see rating it higher on a second read. So, you know, take that for what it is, but I think it's a really, really interesting series. She's doing a great job and she's really into history. I also have a interview that I did with her at the beginning of the year where we talk about this and one of her novellas. I'll link that up above. It was really interesting and cool getting to talk to her about her ideas and her process. The Salt Grows Heavy by Cassandra Ka. This is a, uh, what would you, like very dark, horror novella that is loosely drawing on The Little Mermaid, but set later in her life. I'm not gonna get into this. This has like a lot of content warnings, which is really good. It was, it was good. Check out my Goodreads review for that one. I, I liked it, but it's a lot. Atalanta by Jennifer Saint. This is Greek mythology retelling. My least favorite of the three of hers that I've read so far, but I did like it, especially the second half of the book I thought was much stronger than the first half. You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight by Kaylin Barron really fun, campy, literally, YA horror set at a camp, like a old abandoned summer camp that now they 
like take people on contact horror experiences, except then people actually start disappearing. It, it was good. It was a good time. I liked it. The Do's and Donuts of Love by Adiba Jagirdar. This was really cute too. It's a YA contemporary novel with a sapphic love triangle and baking reality TV show. It was... And a plus size main character that's body positive and handled well. Love. Okay, we came to one I don't remember much about. What happened to this one? The Chaperone by M. Hendrick. Why do I not remember anything about this book? Okay, hold up. We finally came to one I have to look up. I'm, I mean, honestly, that's pretty good. I'll take it. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, as soon as I saw the, the cover, I remember this. This was, this was, this was good. Um, my, my only issues with this have to do with the pacing of it. Okay, so The Chaperone by M. Hendrix is this near future dystopian YA novel. Oh man, this was really good. The only thing that's weird about it, and I suspect this is a publishing issue, is that it reads like two books in a trilogy smashed together. I've noticed this a few times in publishing, and I suspect it's because some publishers are not buying trilogies. So there are planned trilogies that authors are trying to turn into duologies because they only want to buy a duology. And so that's what this reads like. I think there's going to be another book. It reads like there should be another book. Uh, it's really good, but it's but it's weird pacing as it reads like two, the first two books in a trilogy smashed together in terms of like the highs and lows of the action, which is strange. But it's really good and it's dealing with like bodily autonomy and... I, purity culture and it was it was great. I really liked it. Who to F Cares by Huda Fahmi. Really enjoyed this. It's the second graphic novel she's put out. It's loosely autobiographical but fictionalized. Um, this one follows her and her four sisters on a family road trip to Disney World and what it's like growing up in that time like in the 90s to be visibly Muslim and uh, it's funny, but also deals with some ser more serious things. It was good. Oh my gosh. An Island Princess Starts a Scandal by Adriana Herrera. This is the second book in a series. The first book was one of my favorite books of the year last year. This one I thought I would love even more and I did really like it but I didn't love it as much. I think it's just the characters were not as much my vibe but this is a sapphic historical romance and it, it is really good. Like if these tropes speak to you, <laughs> like I think it'll work. You have a slightly older woman who's kind of buttoned up and determined not to let anybody in again and then we have our sort of brash devil make hair exuberant <laughs> young heroine and uh, they're they're quite steamy romance together in Paris in the late 1800s. It was fun. Dark Corners by Megan Golden. I always enjoy Megan Golden's work. I have enjoyed every book I've read from her. This I thought was good. It's got another sort of serial killer thing with somebody with a true crime podcast as the main character. Thorn Hedge by T. Kingfisher. This is a novella that is kind of a somewhat subversive retelling of Sleeping Beauty. I liked it. Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. This is the prequel to Legends and Lattes. I enjoyed it. It was cozy and fun. I didn't love it as much as Legends and Lattes, but I still did like it. It follows Viv earlier in her life when she has an injury in battle and has to rest up in a small town while she heals and meanwhile helps the proprietor of a bookstore improve the bookstore. So I enjoyed it. It was fun. Water Outlaws by S.L. Huang. This is uh, kind of a tome but I liked it. It's a fantasy novel that is based on a classic of Chinese martial arts and it's centering women. It's got queer women in it. It's very action-packed. It was good. The Narrow by Kate Ellis Marshall. This is a queer boarding school ghost story. Does deal with some traumatic things though, so check content warnings. Some of them are spoilery, but you can find them in my Goodreads review if you need them. And my final four star from Neck Alley this year was Octavia Butler, The Last Interview. This I thought was really good. It puts together interviews from Octavia Butler from very early on in her career up until the last interview that she gave before her death. And yeah, if you're a fan of Octavia Butler, I recommend. It was good. This is taking longer than I had planned, but it's fine. This is interesting. Um, four and a half stars. There were 12 of them. All right. Promise Boys by Nick Brooks. <laughs> I liked this. It's got kind of a magnet school murder mystery and it's dealing with racism. Very propulsive, quick to read. Enjoyed it. YA. 
Take the Lead by Alexis Daria. Fantastic. Loved it. This was her indie published debut that got picked up and repackaged through traditional publishing. I really loved this. It's a romance set on a Dancing with the Stars type reality show between a dancer and the man that she gets and he's like such a cinnamon roll and they've got a slow burn romance and she talks about like being in this industry as a Latine woman. It was great. I really I really like this. The Adventures of Amina El Serafi by Shannon Chakraborty. Do I need to talk about it? This has been very popular this year. I, I enjoyed this a lot. I think especially if you like seeing older women in fantasy, mothers in fantasy, this is excellent. She's such a badass mom who had been a former pirate who gave up her job to raise her daughter, but now has to go back and do some some things at sea. And uh, then there's the, the, the husband that she left behind and never told she was pregnant, who isn't quite human. It's great. I, I enjoyed this a lot. We also have The Last Air to Blackwood Library by Hester Fox. This was really fun. It's kind of a gothic horror novel with a romance subplot set after World War II with a haunted estate that a young woman inherits. And uh, she's an unreliable narrator. It was good. The Wishing Pool and Other Stories by Tanana Reeve Dew. I love Tanana Reeve Dew. I think this is a fantastic collection. Do be aware that some of them deal with pandemic stuff, and she wrote them before COVID, but they hit hard post COVID. But really good collection of horror stories. She's so smart, <laughs> like really smart. The Warden by Daniel M. Ford. I enjoyed the hell out of this. This is sort of like Twin Peaks, but with wizards and cozy with a bisexual heroine. Uh, really enjoyed it. I had some slight issues with the ending, but I was a fan of this. I thought it was great. Straight by Chuck Tingle. This came out a while ago, but they put out the audiobook and I got it on NetGalley. It was delightful. Chuck Tingle's horror hits. Man, it is funny and incisive and has things to say that are social commentary. This was great. Night of the Living Queers. This is 13 short stories that are horror or horror adjacent all set on Halloween night by queer black indigenous and person of color authors and I quite liked it I thought it was a great collection I do have a friend who put out their very first story in it so um very excited for them but overall I also liked it as a collection Teach the Torches to Burn by Caleb Rorig this is another one of those remixed classics for a YA audience and this one is a gay Romeo and Juliet and it, it, it was great. He's into Mercutio's younger brother and Juliet is ace. Loved it. It was great. Cruel Seduction by Katie Robert. Uh, we have a whole podcast episode about this one. So go forth there. I really loved it. It's super messy. It's a poly not relationship. And uh, it was good. I loved it. I was a fan. I think it's my second favorite in the series. Holly Horror by Michelle Javes Corpora. I really feel like maybe I should give this five stars instead of four and a half because I keep talking about it and thinking about it. I thought this was so much fun. Really excellent YA horror. Uh, check out my review. I can't talk this much about all of them. This video is going to be so freaking long. Okay. Uh, and then lastly, Starling House by Alexi e. Harrow. Another one I read and reviewed pretty recently. This was a hit. Alexi e. Harrow is hit or miss for me. Loved this one. It's a, a gothic, light, horror, paranormal house that's sentient, that's maybe haunted by the past, and monsters, and a romance between two very broken people who need healing. Uh, it was great. Moving on. Let's look at my five stars from Neck Alley. There were 13 of them, which is pretty good. And those are The Duke's Secret Cinderella by Eva Devon. I love Eva Devon. She is so underrated. I don't really see a lot of other people talking about her. I love her historical romances. They're so great. If you want historical romances with heroes who aren't super alpha and heroines who are smart and independent and like, you know, feminist sensibilities, she's wonderful. This was great. It was a, it was a play on Cinderella, obviously. I, I liked it. Feed Them Silence by Lee Mandelo. This was a weird novella, but it was so good. So good, especially if you've been in a long term relationship. Like, is the horror the body horror of what's happening with like mind connection to the wolves? Or is the horror the breakdown of her marriage with her wife? The Secret Lives of Country Gentlemen by K.J. Charles. This is that first book in the series that I loved that I mentioned earlier. The second one was like, what, three and a half stars? Five stars for this one. Delightful. It was a rompy good time. 
another gay historical romance. I loved it. Good rom-com. A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. I feel like T. Kingfisher is very popular. This one really worked for me. I think I just do better with T. Kingfisher's horror in general. Not always, but I really like her horror. And um, this one was, was very interesting. Haunted House in an interesting way. Monstrous by Sarah Meyer. This was excellent. It is a graphic novel memoir of being a transracial adoptee growing up in middle America and being queer and non-binary. Growing up as a kid dealing with that and feeling like monstrous, this was so good and the author did all of the writing as well as all of their own illustrations. It was incredible, very effective, loved it. The Alchemy of Moonlight by David Ferrero. <laughs> This was so good. I love this. It's so nerdy and niche, but it is an excellent, excellent retelling of the mysteries of Udolpho. It is like upper YA mysteries of Udolpho, but make it gay with werewolves. It's so good. And I feel like it's very niche because a lot of people haven't read mysteries of Udol Udolpho, but if you have read it, it's such a good retelling. One of my favorite retellings I've read in, in a while. I thought this was delightful. All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Crosby. Like, oh, he's, his writing is so beautiful. And the nuance is so good. I, yeah, really great. A Benny Song by P. Jelly Clark. More people need to be reading this. Incredible middle grade, tackling some really big, difficult issues in an age appropriate way. Again, go read my review. I want to see more people reading this. It's great. Silver Nitrate by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Oh, I love her so much. This was her return to horror. Like, Nazi occultism and racism and stuff like and eugenics like as horror but horror and Mexico City I, I, so good The Center by Aisha Manazir Siddiqui I bought myself a copy of this because I loved it so much really really great horror novel if you liked in theory the topics the babble by RF Kuang was trying to tackle but you wanted more nuance and better characterization you should read The Center Oh, we're almost there. Oh my god. Their Vicious Games by Joelle Wellington. Also so good. This was really fun. It's like The Bachelor meets Squid Game. <laughs> it goes there. It goes some wild places. It was, it was great, but obviously satirical. It was so good. Curves for Days by Laura Mower. One of my favorite romances I've read this year. Excellent plus size representation loved the romance, loved the nuance, like, oh, all the things. So good. Genuinely romantic. And lastly, Ghost Roast by Shawnee Gibbs and Shawnell Gibbs. This is the only 2024 release I've read. It comes out in January. It's a YA graphic novel set in New Orleans where it's like a black girl whose dad is like Ghostbusters, sort of, but she thinks it's super embarrassing, but then she gets in trouble and has to work with him for the summer. But turns out she can see ghosts and there's kind of a hot ghost boy. But it also deals with serious issues like the history of slavery in Louisiana and the treatment of black people. Uh, it was it was good. I loved it. It was good. All right, finally, six star reads. This is what I give to my favorites of the year. And I was actually surprised how many of my favorites of the year were things that I had for review on NetGalley. I wasn't expecting it to be this high, but there were five of them. Five, five. And uh, like my favorites is a pretty small number. So I was impressed. The Fiance Farce by Alexandria Belfour freaking loved this contemporary sapphic rom-com with like a marriage of convenience oh it was so good fourth wing by rebecca yaros i know i know not everybody's cup of tea but this was so fun this was the most fun i've had reading a book this year it was just soapy and melodramatic and like a, a popcorn read you know it was a good time and it came right when i needed it too i needed that Warrior Girl Unearthed by Angeline Bully, opposite of a popcorn read, but also very, very good tackling some in-depth issues like the return of sacred objects and ancestral remains to indigenous people, but also has like a, a heist element to it. And it's YA. Very good. Set 10 years after her first book. If You'll Have Me by Uni. This comes out in October and I am obsessed. It is the cutest, most adorable sapphic graphic novel slash new, it's like YA slash new adult set first year of college between a, a nerdy black girl ballflower who has a big thing for like the Asian hottie 
who like seduces all the ladies on campus and it's it's the cutest thing I loved it and lastly Camp Damascus by Chuck Tingle Chuck Tingle is on here twice Camp Damascus uh, okay I also have a reading vlog for this one this was in that horror reading vlog that I talked about earlier man if you have religious trauma if you're an ex-evangelical <laughs> so good so so good um anyway those are all of the neck alley books that i have finished which is a lot and that took a lot longer than i thought it was going to overall really really strong showing a lot of amazing books and i think i've done a pretty good job of picking things now let's briefly talk about the 29 books that I have not yet read and I'm gonna go by month. So there's 18 2023 20, releases and 11 2024 20, releases. I'm gonna make this quick because I think I'm gonna run out of battery soon. And also we've been filming a lot longer than I thought. For August we have Together We Rot by Skyla Arndt. I should have read this already but I haven't. I'm about to start it. It's YA I think horror and romance with culty vibes. I'll let you know. So I had one for August, seven in September, Into the Bright Open by Sherry Dimmeline. This is another remixed classic, but it is an indigenous author retelling The Secret Garden. I've started it and so far it's interesting. My Rogue to Ruin by Erica Ridley. This is a historical romance from an author that I really love. We have a disabled heroine in this one. These are a rompy good time. I like them. Monstrous by Jessica Lewis. This one I think is YA horror. It says it's good for fans of supernatural and Lovecraft country. God Killer by Hannah Kainer. This has all the autumnal vibes. The cover looks beautiful. It's a fantasy novel and I'm reading it for a podcast episode. I hope I hope I enjoy it. Witch of Wild Things by Raquel Vasquez Jaliland. I read her debut YA novel and loved it. I thought her writing was gorgeous. This is her first adult novel and it's like witchy. She writes latine stuff so I want to read this. The Meadows by Stephanie Oakes. This is another YA novel that I think has cult stuff. I like cult stuff. Can you tell? Find Him Where You Left Him Dead by Kristen Simmons. This is her first YA horror novel and I've really enjoyed other books from her in the past so I'm curious about this one. It's got like secrets in the past that are being revisited. In October I have three. The Night Hunt by Alexandra Christo. This is like why a dark romantic I think. I don't know. I read something else from Alexandra Christo that I liked and I was like, yeah, sure, this looks cool. Just a Pinch of Magic by Alicia Dow. This is her first middle grade novel with baking magic and I, it looks adorable. I have enjoyed everything else I've read from Alicia Dow and I have this one pre-ordered, but I also have the arc from Neck Alley. And finally, People to Follow by Olivia Worley. This is a debut why thriller that involves influencers and I remember the premise sounded really interesting. Ten teen influencers come to a remote island to star in a reality show but when one of them winds up dead they realize this time the price of being cancelled could be their lives. <laughs> it sounds really fun. I'm excited. Finally in November I've got seven books. Hunt on Dark Waters by Katie Robert. This is her pirate romance series. Very excited for it. The Hunting Moon by Susan Denner. This is the sequel to her contemporary YA fantasy series. The first one was really fun, very fast paced, very readable, and I'm excited to read number two. Do Your Worst by Rosie Dannon, who I've also enjoyed before. This one just sounds like a out there, rompy, good time with like two people trying to cover up a murder and maybe a romance. I don't, I don't really know. We're gonna see how it goes, but it like, I like her writing, so hopefully it'll be fun. What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez. This they are saying is like death on the Nile but with fantasy elements which sounds great so okay sure. System Collapse by Martha Wells. This is the next Murderbot novella. Of course I want to read it always. I love Murderbot. Godly Heathens by H.E. Edgemon. Oh yeah so this is by the author of The Witch King. They're a non-binary author infatuation, reincarnation, damnation. It follows a non-binary seminal teen living in a small town and I, I don't know it we'll see how it goes. It looks it looks interesting so excited for that. And then lastly for 2023 we have Gwen and Art are not in love by Lex Croucher which I think is like a queer comedic take on the Arthurian legend. I don't know. <laughs> it just I think I've read something else from this author and liked it. It sounded fun. So we have that. All right. 
Then in 2024, I currently have 11, <laughs> already have 11, um, already have 11 books for review. Three of them are in January. That includes Mislaid in Parts Unknown by Shauna McGuire. I don't think it's unknown. Half known. It's not unknown. It's half known. Uh, Parts Half Known. This is the next book in the Wayward Children series, which I love. This one has dinosaurs, like a world with dinosaurs. Cool. Most Ardently by Gabe Cole Novoa. This is another remixed classic. This one is Queer Pride and Prejudice with a non-binary or trans character, I think. Sounds great. And then The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland, which is like a witchy YA fantasy. It looks fun. In February, I've got six, so we've got a lot coming in February already. These Deadly Prophecies by Andrea Tang. This is another YA fantasy that sounded fun. When Grumpy Met Sunshine by Charlotte Stein. This is the first traditionally published romance from an author who a TikToker that I like loves. That's really why I requested it. And it's Grumpy Sunshine, so hopefully I enjoy it. We'll see. The Cursed Rose by Leslie Vetter. This is the third book in a YA trilogy that I have really been enjoying. It's a uh, queer, gender flipped, Indiana Jones meets Sleeping Beauty. It's a lot of fun. The Princess Protection Program by Alex London. This is his first middle grade book and it looks adorable. I have really enjoyed other things from Alex London and this just looks so cute. Every fairy tale ends with its characters living happily ever after, right? But what if the princess does not think a kiss from a stranger is a very pleasant way to wake up? Yuck. <laughs> no, this sounds fun. It sounds sounds like it'll be fun and cute. The Imposition of Unnecessary Obstacles by Malka Older. This is the second book in a sci-fi mystery novella series that I really enjoy. It's kind of Sherlockian in inspiration with a sapphic romance, slow burn sapphic romance at the center, set on Jupiter, on a colony on Jupiter. Really like the first one, excited for the second one. And finally, The Butcher of the Forest by Premi Mohammed. The Butcher of the Forest by Premi Mohammed. This looks beautiful. It's a novella, I think coming out from Tor.com like a world weary woman races against the clock to rescue the children of a wrathful tyrant from a dangerous otherworldly forest. It sounds intriguing. Finally I've got two books coming out in April of 2024 and that is it. Oh man this is a lot. Okay first we have A Sweet Sting of Salt by Rose Sutherland. I think think this might be a debut novel and it sounded really interesting. It's a queer reimagining of the Selkie wife folktale. It says once a young woman uncovers a dark secret about her neighbor and his mysterious new wife she'll have to fight to keep herself and the woman she loves safe. Sounds good. Hopefully. Finally we have Every Time You Hear That Song by Jenna Voorhees. This is a queer by a contemporary novel that's being called Dumplin' Meets Daisy Jones and the Six in the split POV love song to country idols, romantic road trips, and queer love. I mean it sounds good, right? It sounds good. So whew, man that was a lot more than I thought it was going to be but overall I would say that even though I've been requesting more books on NetGalley for a review than I intended to this year, in general I've been picking up things that I really like and even things from new authors who I hadn't read from before. I think I'm doing a pretty good job of filtering out books that are not going to work for me and you know trying out some new things here and there as well as reading from tried and true authors who I know that I like. I've got quite a bit of diversity in the books that I'm picking up from BIPOC authors, from queer authors, different genres but mostly in the ones that I am the biggest fan of. So yeah that is 2023 so far on NetGalley and that'll give you a good overview of the majority of the things that I'm gonna read on NetGalley this year. Maybe there will be a few more that pop on here but I wouldn't expect a lot. But yeah hopefully this was interesting and gave you an overview of how the year has been going and where it's headed next year. Some of the things that are already on my radar for 2024. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts on this video. Let me know if this was interesting, if you liked this, if you'd like to see me do this again in the future. I don't think I'm going to do them too often but if people are into this I could periodically kind of go over it. Also hope you enjoy my new fall decor. I have decorated for fall because it was time. Um, I'm very ready for it. It's exciting. Comment below. Let me know if you use NetGalley. How do you use it? How do you approach what you request? I um, am not great at limiting myself if a book sounds interesting. I do almost entirely request things under 400 pages if it's not an audiobook though. So that's like that's been helpful to a certain extent. 
talk to me in the comments down below. If you like this video, it always helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Uh, oh. Happy fall, everyone!